Somebody's in trouble. This is after he already tried to use Kyle's right to remain silent against him. Wait, can I get a link to that? And the next time it happens, I'll be asking for a mistrial with prejudice. This. For me, not for you. My understanding of you your- You should have come. That's basic law. It's been basic law in this country for 40 years, 50 years. I have no idea why you would do something like that. Oh man. It oh God, this is the prosecution's secret weapon. <laughs> this is some Bigfoot found footage. The exhibit is, but not the pinch and zoom, right? You could argue it's a different thing, which is what the defense is doing. Well, if By zooming in on an image and you want to see things that aren't seeable without zooming in, then what you're doing is, is you're applying an algorithm to the picture to try to guess what's in between the pixels, right? So this is a process known as interpolation. People saying, yeah, that one woman saying she wants some in prison and stuff, that's insane. I think that the Rittenhouse thing has become a really good litmus test for how intellectually honest you are or willing to engage with stuff that might not necessarily be in your political aisle. Because holy f there have been so much brain dead, so much, so many brain dead takes on this sh where it's like, really? Like, you cross state lines, you can't defend him anywhere. Really? That, we want to go with that argument, bro? Like, so what? Are it Trying to be too hyperbolic. Could I kill an illegal immigrant in the United States because they weren't supposed to be here? Because that's actually illegal, crossing the border illegally. Like, it, it's so crazy because when the Rittenhouse stuff came out, all of a sudden every lefty became really big pro borders and pro curfew. Like, in the biggest coin flip ever. I've never seen more stringent border enforcement advocates and, and curfew enforcement advocates my entire life than when the Rittenhouse stuff started happening. All of a sudden it's like, why was he out there at night? He should have been there. Why did he cross state lines? Like, damn. I don't know. That just seems a little bit, uh, a little bit interesting. The night of August 25th, you're here in Kenosha, Wisconsin saying you're an EMT, correct? Yes. That was a lie. Yes. You were also telling people you were 18 or 19 years old. That was a lie too, right? No, I didn't tell anybody my age that night. You never volunteered it at all, did you? I didn't. Because you knew as a 17 year old, you shouldn't have been there, right? Wait, did he not? <laughs> wait, did he not know the answer to that question? Okay, wait, here, okay. Fuck. Okay, Apple Ezra Esports Batman can correct me if I'm wrong, okay? In, um, on television, um, okay, on TV, when you're doing like a trial, okay, you don't know what's gonna happen, okay? Like, prosecutor, defendant, they're asking questions. We're looking for those big like, oh shit moments in court, okay? Like, okay, we're gonna figure out what this guy knows, we're gonna ask the witness this, we're gonna figure out, we're gonna blah, 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 okay? That has, my understanding is, that has zero relation to real life trials. Like, in real life, you put together everything in the discovery phase of a lawsuit. So, oof, okay, I don't know all the stages exactly, but like before you ever actually go to trial, you have a phase called discovery. Now in the discovery phase, okay, everybody has to put all of their cards on the table. If I need to subpoena somebody, if I wanna request some records, if I wanna do this, you go to the judge, you get an okay on it if you need to, you do everything, all of your cards are on the table in the discovery phase, okay? You always, all of that is down. Now, once you have all of your information available, um, then you put together your story, okay? He did this and that and that and that and that and that and that, okay? Now, your goal, generally, as a prosecutor, is you wanna bring people onto the stand. It's kind of like, imagine like, like trial is like your test and discovery is, trial is like an essay test and the discovery phase is like you're studying. The whole point of a trial is to get everything entered into the record so that the jury can hear it and make a decision. That's the goal. I don't know why, um, unless somebody can tell you, I don't know why you would ask questions in court and not know the answer. You're not really asking questions as, a, as an attorney or as a lawyer. You're just trying to, you're, you're asking questions, you already know the answer to get that entered into the record so that you can do your line of questioning and then have the jury hear everything and then that's it, right? Um, yeah, I, 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 the asking a question and getting an answer you weren't expecting is, that's very, very, very strange to me. I, I don't know why, um, I, I don't know why, I don't know why you would do that or what, or people are saying this happens a lot, but it's more of a rhetorical thing that prosecutors, okay, well, how is that going for him? Shouldn't you try to find the truth regardless? Yeah, the truth is discovered during discovery, okay? No, I just 
didn't find it relevant to give my name. Well, I gave my name, but my age to anybody. It just not. It wasn't something that came up. Well, oh, Abdullah said some of it can be optics since this is a jury trial. I'm sure there are some questions you can ask to, for optics. Tech well, because technically all of the question is for optics because you're you're trying to show everything to the jury show, right? Conversation. It's because you felt if people found out how old you were, they'd realize you shouldn't have been there, right? No, it just because it didn't come up in conversation. If somebody would have asked, I would have been like, yeah, I'm 17. So you felt that as a 17-year-old, it was appropriate for you to be out on the streets of Kenosha with an AR-15 that night. Fair? I believe I had any other right to be there as anybody else. As any other adult? As anybody. But you weren't an adult? No. You indicated that you were working at the RecPlex at, and had been working at the Y before that. Is that right? Yes. That was a YMCA down in Illinois, correct? Correct. And you had gotten furloughed there when COVID hit in March? Yes. And you had only started working at the RecPlex on August 14th, correct? Um, I believe I got hired before that, but I was on vacation on August 14th, so I couldn't, I was on vacation, so I couldn't start until August 14th. Your first time working at the RecPlex was on August 14th, correct? I believe that was my first day. And then you worked the week after that from August 17th to August 23rd, correct? I believe so, uh, till August 24th, I worked. And then your final shift was on uh, August 24th, correct? Yes. You worked a total of 41 and a half hours at the RecPlex, correct? That's the number you got. And you were a lifeguard? Yes. You were walking around their swim area with one of those red, long, life-saving things, monitoring the pool, correct? A rescue tube, yes. Okay. So, but that was the, at the indoor pool at the RecPlex? It was at the indoor, it was at the, I don't know if you're familiar with the RecPlex. I am. Um, I guarded the water park area and the competition <laughs> pool. Okay. So they've got a water park area with a slide and a zero entry pool, is that right? Yes. And then next to that they've got a larger, almost Olympic sized pool where swim meets happen. A 50 meter um, competition pool divided in half to make it a 25. Okay, and you were lifeguarding at both of those? I, I would uh, rotate, we had rotations and me and other guards, we would do three, we had three person shifts we would rotate out watching the different areas of our zones. You indicated that at no time did this gun, this AR-15, ever leave the state of Wisconsin. Is that right? Other than the night after, other than that. Before the shootings. Correct. There was a time, though, where you wanted to have it with you down in Illinois, isn't it? It wasn't there? Um, I believe there was a time when I was, me and Dominic were mad at each other, um, yeah. You were mad at Dominic? Me and Dominic were mad over something. And you wanted to have the gun with you down there? I think I said something along those lines. You'd agree with me that, let me, let me back up for a second here. You have testified to this jury that you used deadly force against Joseph Rosenbaum, Anthony Huber, the man who attempted to kick you in the face, and Gage Grosskreutz on the night of August 25th, correct? Yes. And you did that because you felt that your life was in danger from those four people, correct? Yes. And you are telling this jury that it was, in your mind, justified to use deadly force to protect your own life, correct? Yes. You'd agree with me that you were not allowed to use deadly force to protect that car source building, correct? Well, I, w I wasn't using deadly force to protect the property. I used deadly force to protect myself, so. I, I, please listen to my question and answer my question if you can. You'd agree with me that you were not allowed to use deadly force to protect that car source building, correct? Yes. You'd agree with me that you were not allowed to use deadly force to stop someone from smashing the windows of an unoccupied parked car, correct? I don't think you could use deadly force for that. You'd agree with me that you can't use deadly force to stop someone from letting a metal dumpster on fire, correct? Correct. 
you'd agree with me that you can't use deadly force to stop someone from tipping over a porta potty, correct? Correct. You'd agree with me that you can't use deadly force to stop someone from lighting a flatbed trailer on fire, correct? Correct. You'd agree with me that you can't use deadly force to stop someone who is about to start an unoccupied car on fire, correct? Correct. You'd agree with me that you can't use deadly force to stop someone from lighting some traffic cones in the middle of the street on fire, correct? Correct. So you understand that there's a difference between using deadly force to protect yourself and using it to protect property, correct? Yes. And you'd agree with me that you're not allowed to use deadly force to protect property, correct? Yes. But yet you have previously indicated that you wished you had your AR-15 to protect someone's property, correct? I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to ask you to go into the library uh, again for a moment, please. Uh -oh. Just going to talk about the case. Somebody's in trouble. This was the second time the judge did this? Oh, shit, really? This is after he already tried to use Kyle's right to remain silent against him? Wait, really? Can I get a link to that? I don't think I ever saw that moment. He's either forgetting the court's rulings or attempting- Wait, stop the video? Watch the other one first? Since August 25th, 2020, this is the first time that you have told your story. It's sustained. Since August 25th, 2020, you've had the benefit of watching countless videos of your actions that night, correct? I've seen certain videos, not all of them. I've seen the majority of them actually here during the trial. You've also had the opportunity- That happens after, check the timestamp, it's 20 minutes later? Wait, am I not at the right, am I not at the right spot right now, or? Be to read articles. People have written interviews, things like that, about what happened that night, correct? I, I do my best to avoid what people write on the internet. A majority of it, it's not true. You have also sat here through eight days of trial, correct? Yes. And you've had the opportunity to watch all of the videos yes. that have been played in this trial? Yes. Sir, if you could please let me finish my question before answering, and I will do my best to let you finish your answer before I go on to the next question, fair? Yes. You've also had the opportunity to listen to the testimony of all 30-some witnesses that have testified in this trial so far, correct? Yes. And after all of that, now, you are telling us your side of the story, correct? Correct. Um, I'm going to ask you folks to go in the library for just a second. Please don't talk about the case. Uh-oh. Okay. What was wrong there? It, it, so... Your first, uh, your Fifth Amendment right to not incriminate yourself is really important. I don't know what the judge is about to say, but if I had to guess, um, you can't say that, like, you can't use somebody's Fifth Amendment against them. That's, like, pretty fucked up. So you're like, oh, you didn't say anything until you heard everybody else testify, and now you're ready to give your side of the story? That's like, that's like, bro, that's the whole fucking point of the Fifth Amendment, you fucking moron. I don't have to say shit to you. What the fuck? I'm not gonna, I can talk whenever the fuck I want to talk, right? That seems like... You can in the UK? Well, listen, fuck the UK. Now, I don't know what the, um, I don't know, like, what the, um, precedent is for people asking questions like this or how that goes, but. You need to account for this. Your Honor, I don't want to, I don't want to jury here. He's commenting on my client's right to remain silent. I am making the point that after hearing everything in the case, now he's tailoring his story to what has already been introduced. That's the problem the is, this is a grave constitutional violation for you to talk about the defendant's silence. And that is, and, and, the, and you're right, you're right on the, you're right on the borderline. And you may you may be over, but uh, it better stop. Understood. This is, I can't think of the case, the initial case on it, but it's, uh, this is not permitted. All right, um, ask the jury to come in, please. 
Oh, that was it. He didn't get shouted out too bad there. Okay, now we go to the second one. Thing to provoke a mistrial in this matter. He knows he can't go into this, and he's asking the questions. I ask the court to strongly admonish him, and the next time it happens, I'll be asking for a mistrial with prejudice. He's an experienced attorney, and he knows better. Mr. Finger? First of all, Your Honor, this was the subject of a motion. I'm well aware of that. And the court left the door open. This for me, not for you. My understanding of You your should have come and asked. Uh-oh. For, uh, for reconsideration. You did on the one motion, and in fact, I granted your motion for reconsideration. That was excuse not our me, motion. I, I, I uh, not so, uh, excuse me. I, I, I did, I granted. We did not move that for reconsideration. That was their motion. I, I, we have I, not filed any me. motions to reconsider in this case. That was their motion for reconsideration, which I denied. But uh, I said, I denied it, or I indicated a bias towards denial is what I did. Held it open with a bias towards denial. Why would you think that that made it okay for you without any advance notice to bring this matter before the jury? You are already, you were, I, I was a, astonished when you began your examination by commenting on the defendant's post-arrest silence. That's basic law. It's been basic law in this country for 40 years, 50 years. I have no idea why you would do something like that. Oh, man. And it gives, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So I don't know what you're up to. May I respond? Yes. We filed another acts motion on this exact issue because, in my mind, and I argued this, it is identical to what was going on on the night of August 25th in the sense that the defendant was using this exact same weapon he was using it in a manner to try and protect property. No, he wasn't. There's, Your Honor, I, with all due respect. I'm not going to rehash the motion. That's absolutely untrue. It and is there's, no, no, no. Your arguments of record, my comments are of record, and why I ruled as I did is of record. There's nothing that I heard in this trial to suggest that anything's changed. Even if you're correct in your assumption that you know more than uh, I did at the time, uh, you should have come to the court and say, I want to go into this. Uh, why you would think that you could go into it without any advance notice to the court, I don't understand that. And as the uh, defense is pointing out, you're an experienced trial lawyer, and this should not have been gone into. Your Honor, there have been things in this case, testimony in this case, that I believe opens the door to this. For example, the defense has introduced evidence that the defendant pointed a gun at a man wearing yellow pants because that person was on a car, on the car source lot. Now, there's no justification that I can think of why the defendant would point that gun at someone. The defendant has just testified this morning that he agreed with that person in the yellow pants, that he pointed the gun at him. He said, I was joking when I said that to the guy in the yellow pants, but he said, he's acknowledged that he told the person in the yellow pants, yeah, you're right. Can I you did explain what's going on? So, I, fuck, I haven't watched the full trial. So, where is Apple is at? Apple is? Or Pisco. So it sounds like him trying to establish that Rittenhouse is using a firearm in defense of property or whatever, that this line of questioning, it feels like it was either stopped before or there hasn't been enough evidence in the trial presented thus far for him to question him like that because it's too, I guess, leading or establishing something that hasn't actually been proven or there hasn't been evidence of that. Um, so my guess is is that if you're, if you're not able to bring up, or if you want to go down this line of questioning, but the judge has said you can't, before, or if there's some pretrial thing that says you're not allowed to do this, then he needs to go to the judge's quarters or office or whatever before actually, like before the trial happens and clear it with the judge. So I don't know if you'd file a motion or I don't know if you'd do something, but you, he, he needs to clear this line of questioning first with the judge rather than just trying to do this in the middle of trial and hope that the judge doesn't recognize it or is okay with it or whatever. Um, because it's, yeah. That's, that's what it sounds like, I guess, yeah. The court had ruled for the clip he was about to mention not be considered as evidence and therefore not shown to the jury. Gotcha. So he was trying to sneakily get it into the record, I guess, when the, then the judge had explicitly already said that you weren't allowed to do that, which is obviously a big no-no. Is this type of arguing shit with the judge normal for a huge case like this, or is this lawyer that much of a dumb fuck? I don't know. Who knows? 
It was a Facebook comment where Kyle saw some shoplifters and said, I wish I had my rifle a few months before. Gotcha. And this was, and they disallowed this from being submitted as evidence. Okay. So if that's the case, then he's try he's trying to get that evidence into the record, into the jury's mind then, even though the judge kind of said earlier that he wasn't allowed to, maybe, I don't know this. Did point a gun at you when you were sitting on a car. He said, I did. That's what he Exactly. Testified. So he's agreeing. May I finish, please? I'd like to have a chance to make a record if I could, without being interrupted, if that's okay. He has mentioned that he has, he's acknowledged that he's used this gun to protect property. He's also just acknowledged that he knows he can't do that. I am attempting to impeach him now with the prior August 10th incident. 15 days prior, involving the same gun, where he is threatening to use that gun to protect property. It he goes... He the gun with him. Your Honor, he, he is not. saying he wished he did so he could <laughs> shoot people. You know, there's a lot of difference between commenting about something when you haven't got a gun. Oh, no. This guy's trying to use a Twitter argument. He it was a threat. Motherfucker. What are you talking about? I wish I had a gun and threatening somebody with a gun. These are two different things. Now on Twitter, that may as well be called murder, right? But these are actually different things, right? And threatening someone when you do. You know, it's interesting, Your Honor, because the entire defense theory in this case is Joseph Rosenbaum, who was unarmed. You tell me what the defense theory of the case is. I want- Okay, wait, I don't know if this is like, <laughs> I don't know if this is, maybe in lawyer talk, obviously I'm not a trial lawyer and I don't watch a lot, Maybe in lawyer talk, you see this phrase show up more often, but anytime I hear somebody say, you know, it's interesting, that is like the most passive aggressive phrase. That's some shit that somebody says right before you fucking close your phone for the night. You're like, I'll look at this motherfucking shit in the morning because you know shit's about to go crazy. When somebody's like, I just think it's funny that, right? It's really interesting that, <laughs> but uh, maybe, maybe for in trial, maybe that type of, maybe that parlance is more common. I, I'm not sure. But. And threatening someone when you do. You know, it's interesting, Your Honor, because the entire defense theory in this case is Joseph Rosenbaum, who was unarmed. I want you to tell me what the defense theory of the case is. I want. May I, look, res may I respond look. to what you just said, Your Honor? I'd like to respond to what you just said. Dude, look at his mouth. He's so mad. That judge is pissed. I, I apologize, Madam Court Reporter, but I'd like to try and make a record without anyone interrupting me, if that's okay. I believe that there is a central part of this case that Mr. Rosenbaum is making threats that he has no ability to carry out. So to your point, Your Honor, you're arguing that this August 10th incident, one, one aspect of why you don't believe it's relevant is the defendant didn't have the gun with him. The, this case is about someone who didn't have a weapon and yet the jury is being told because what? of those threats, that means the defendant has to defend himself. So oh. with all due respect, Your oh. Honor, Mere verbal threats have already been shown to this jury and used as a basis for someone's subsequent actions. I am attempting with the defendant to use his mere verbal threat on August 10th, 15 days prior, that he's going to shoot shoplifters with his AR-15 to impeach the defendant in a murder trial. I would ask the court's forbearance to do that. I apologize, Your Honor. You're right. I probably should have brought this to your attention earlier. I may have misunderstood your ruling because I thought your ruling was if the evidence in this case made that more relevant, you would admit it or at least consider it it's an admittance. I believe, based on the evidence that we've heard and more specifically exactly what the defendant said earlier about admitting pointing a gun at someone who was merely jumping or sitting on a car, that the door is open now to this testimony. And I continue to believe that his state of mind, his intent, his belief as to self-defense is the core of this case. That was the basis for my motion. You were strongly inclined against it. I understand that. But now we're in the middle of trial and there's been a lot of evidence that's come in that I think makes this relevant. So I'm attempting to impeach the defendant on his beliefs. I believe I'm entitled to impeach the defendant on his beliefs and on his I'm statements. Gonna, I'm gonna interrupt you now because you're talking about his beliefs. I think that's what they call his statements to your honor. Because he just said, can't use deadly force, can't threaten to use deadly force to protect property. So now I'm impeaching him on that. Your honor, what's the, the court has seen no reason to change its ruling. And just so this record is clear, in spite of the lengthy statement by Mr. Binger, 
Before we started today, the court specifically stated in Mr. Binger's presence, there's been nothing to have me change any of my rulings. There have been numerous occasions during this trial where they've opened the door. The one time when they're going into Mr. Rosenbaum's prior reason he doesn't like guns, and I said something, I whispered in Mr. Krause's ear, it's because of the prior convictions. Please stop. And he did. He knows if you're going to go into something that's been excluded in a pretrial order, you better ask the court, you better get permission. This is ridiculous. It, was, know, it wasn't excluded, Your Honor. You know why it was excluded in the first place? Because it's, it was propensity evidence. That is exactly what 90404 is designed to prevent. You're talking about his attitudes. His attitude is he wants to shoot people. Now, I've admitted that kind of evidence in other trials when it's been appropriate. I didn't admit it in this case because, to me, what I've heard in this trial, and by the way, Mr. Richards absolutely correctly points out that just hours ago, I said I had heard nothing in this trial to change any of my rulings. That was before so the why? Testimony, Your Honor. Pardon me. That was before the Don't defense testimony. Don't get brazen with me. Uh, uh, you <laughs> knew very well. You know very well that an attorney can't go into these types of areas when the judge has already ruled without asking outside the presence of the jury to do so. So don't give me that. That's number one. Number two, this is propensity evidence. I said at the time that I made my ruling, and I'll repeat again now for you, I see no similarity between talking about wishing you had your AR gun, which you don't have, <laughs> so that you could take fire rounds at these uh, thought-to-be shoplifters. And the incidents in these cases, which are not, there's nothing in your case that suggests the defendant was lying in wait to shoot at somebody or reflecting upon the shooting for a vast amount of time. Every one of the incidents involves uh, matters that involve seconds in time. So I don't, I comment at the time, I don't see the similarity, and I don't see the similarity now. If it's not similar, that's, that's the whole rule. Those are all the exceptions to 90404. Check the authorities. Wigmore on evidence. Judge Weinstein. Colonel McCormick. It's the, crime, the prior act has to bear the signature of the accused, or it has to be so similar as to suggest it's a common plan or something like that. You have an incident where he's making comments about some alleged shoplifters versus an, a, 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 a crimes that involve instantaneous actions, whether premeditated murder or whether self-defense, that's for the jury to decide. But I don't see the similarity. I said it couldn't come in, and it isn't coming in, no matter what you think. Damn. Number two. He mad. <clears throat> I, I have to be concerned that with what Mr. Richards has said about the 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 progress of the trial, and and um, when when you were way well, I said you were over the line and uh, close to or over the line on commenting on the defendant's pretrial silence, which is a well-known rule. I, I, I'm astonished that that would have been an issue. So I don't want to have another issue as long as this case continues. Is that clear? <laughs> Thank you. I ask the jury to come back in, please. Oh, God, don't. The burden of proof is on you to prove to me that there is no pixel fairy. Guys, if you don't know, did we, does everybody here remember my speech? I don't know if it's like different people in or out or what. Did we talk about this? Um, does everybody here remember my earlier conversation about this? I don't know like how new or old the audience is.
If someone hypothetically got fucked because of some constitutional violation that went under the nose of the judge and the trial already ended, can its conclusion be revoked? I mean, I think the defense can always appeal, um, right? But you have to have a good reason for it. Did you see the um, the prosecution has called about video games? Oh no, link me that one. That'll be a good meme. Go. Oh wait, somebody said he gets mad one more time. Does this actually happen? Hold on. Um, Judge, I'm uh, at the at the lunch break. Um, I had done some research, and at this point, um, the defense is going to be making a motion for a mistrial. However, that motion is going to be requested with prejudice. Um, I'm, I'm aware that the court's aware that normally a, a defense motion uh, for a mistrial does not uh, preclude a retrial. I understand that. There are exceptions to that, however. And um, the case that I uh, am drawing this from is Day versus State. It's 76 with second 588. And what it says is... Explain the pixel service thing. Yeah, I'll explain this real quickly, just in case. I, a lot of you are probably here earlier, but just in case you're not. So... Um, Anytime you have a picture and you're trying to zoom in on the picture, one of two things can happen. Either one, the picture is going to be incredibly blocky because you're just making the pixels bigger, in which case you don't actually get any clarity in resolution, meaning you're not seeing things clearer in more detail um, because you're zooming the image in. If you wanna get more detail by zooming in on an image and you wanna see things that aren't seeable without zooming in, then what you're doing is, is you're applying an algorithm to the picture to try to guess what's in between the pixels, right? So this is a process known as interpolation. It's where you're taking known values and using estimates from between those values, you're trying to guess what might go in between those values. Now, this is perfectly fine when we're trying to cut somebody out of an image uh, and there's like a beach in the background. Uh, now that's a lot, that's a much more sophisticated form of interpolation because you're guessing on a lot of material. But if you're talking about the difference between like a guy's gun being here or here, and it's going to be a few pixels that are going to determine whether or not it's in a particular place, I would not want somebody using some sort of algorithm, a zoom algorithm to, to, um, ascertain where my weapon is pointed. Because if you gotta zoom that much, you don't have the information. I'm sorry, but it is not possible to invent information digitally like that. You're creating new information. You're not discovering like some true thing. Whatever you're doing is completely software generated. An exception to this rule exists where a defendant's motion is necessitated by prosecutorial impropriety designed to avoid an acquittal. Now, what has happened in, uh, in this, this morning was uh, two times. Uh, the state had commented on Mr. Rittenhouse's right to- Hold on, so real quick. I think it would count as evidence if the algorithm is accurate enough. No, if the, alg the algorithm, the reason why you need an algorithm is because you need an algorithm to invent new information. It can never be accurate. There is no accuracy. It is fantasy. Now, it may or may not be the case the fantasy aligns with what happened in reality, but you are inventing new information when you interpolate. That is the definition of interpolation. Remain silent. The first time he was admonished by the court, the second time the court had the jury leave and re-admonished him on that. Prior to Mr. Rittenhouse testifying. Pinch Zoom, which is all the prosecution was using, does none of these enhancements you're talking about. And yes, you can see the individual pixels better, which was what was desired. If that is the case, part of what you do on trial is when you're presenting evidence, or you've got some technical piece of thing, it is the onus is on you, I, generally. I don't know when, maybe not in this case, but generally, the onus is on you to provide an expert witness to explain why what you're doing works. So. Um, the, my, my, from what I've read here, they didn't have one of those on hand, right? So if it was the case that they were just blowing the image up and they weren't adding any new data, they probably needed an expert witness to come on and say, hey, this was zoomed in this way. I'm, cert I'm testifying that there was no altering of the image. This is exactly as it was. The pixels are just bigger, but like they would probably, um, um, yeah, you would probably need that person there to testify that. That'd be my guess.
They didn't use pinch zoom. The prosecutor's being very coy and pretending that what they did was pinch zoom. They did it on video and interpolate. Oh, if it's on video. Yeah, also pinch zoom might use interpolation. I don't know that or not. That's what I'm saying. You'd need the expert witness there, right? Yeah. The Call of Duty clip starts here. Um, oh, wait, let's finish this one. Destiny, dude, there is no post-processing involved when you just zoom in on a computer or a phone, but even then, you understand Judge said that, not because he actually thought it, but because he doesn't know shit. You don't know that? I don't know that. I don't, th I don't think you know that either, especially on a phone. There is so much software involved in your phone shit when it comes to pictures yeah. and stuff. I, I wouldn't want my life riding on that without an expert there to testify whether or not that was or was not the case. Why did the Serbs call it a pixel fairy? Because he's a dumb fuck that doesn't know anything about any of the technology involved. This court addressed various things with not only Mr. Rittenhouse, but with the lawyers. You had cited various statutes and then you had asked if that anything had, would be coming up on, for example, I think 90608. One of the other things you addressed was 90404. And you had said that based on the information that had come out at the trial, nothing had changed as it relates to your ruling. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Binger stated, and we looked it up, previously, he said to Mr. Rittenhouse, previously indicated that you wish to have your AR-15 to protect someone's property. Clearly in violation not only, only of the prior ruling that you had made, but the ruling that very day, that very morning. Wait, real quick. This is the image, if I'm to understand this correctly, not people saw this, I'm assuming it's correct. This is the image that they're trying to use to prove, I think, the direction that Kyle's rifle was pointed. That, this is my understanding. I wish we could go to this part of the trial and watch it. We'll, we'll do that in a little bit, because I'm curious if this is actually the image they were trying to use, because this seems... It almost looks like the Wu Yeah guy. The zoom you did right now is interpolation. Um, I don't believe on browser zooms there any interpolating happens, but it might. It, I'm trying to think if there might be some necessary interpolation that happens between an image that's rendered. If I just, I don't know hardware that well because all rendering might almost intrinsically involve some form of interpolation if it's being rendered on, um, on any screen ever. I don't know if that's the case or not. Unless you're literally watching like at the native resolution. Uh, yeah, unless you're literally seeing something at the native resolution. Um, but any, anything non-native might almost necessarily be, unless it's exactly scaled like two to one or four to one or something, but I, I'm not sure. Um, people keep saying if you can't see pixel edges, I, 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 don't, I don't know how finite or what the, is it PPI or whatever uh, of the monitor has to be to see that, I'm not sure. Should anti-aliasing get a pass? No, anti-aliasing, if I understand it correctly, is I'm pretty sure is a form of interpolation, no? Because in anti-aliasing, you're blurring edges and trying to blend stuff together using guesses, um, but you're, you're creating images, you're creating data that's not there, you're, yeah. Um, it appears to be uh, that there are two really elements the court must consider when making a determination on a mistrial for what amounts to prosecutorial overreaching. And the first one is the prosecutor's actions must be intentional in the sense of a culpable state of mind in the nature of awareness that his activity would be prejudicial to the defendant. I would argue to you that that's clearly aware of that. You had warned him, uh, you had told him prior to uh, Mr. Rittenhouse testifying that these things, certainly the 90404 was off limits. You had warned him about the uh, infringement on his constitutional right to remain silent. He did it again. The second one, I did think, he do it again? some action by the court in terms of a finding. The second one says the prosecutor's actions was designed uh, to uh, allow uh, another chance to convict. That is to provoke a mistrial in order to get another kick at the cat because the first trial is going badly or to, pre or to prejudice the defendant's rights to successfully complete the criminal confrontation at the first trial. 
Now, the, the case that I had cited is a Kenosha case, um, State versus Coping. Opening? Yep. Uh, 100 with second, 700. C O P E N I N G? Yes, sir. In that case, the court didn't make findings uh, regarding the prosecutor's actions. So I don't know that it's my role to sit here and say who's winning. I, I don't think that's necessarily what I'm supposed to do. But I think the court has to make some findings as it relates to the bad faith on the part of the prosecution. Damn. And if the court makes a finding that uh, the actions that I had talked about were done in bad <laughs> Jesus faith, Christ. then I think both elements uh, for mistrial with prejudice have been met. And I think under the circumstances, based on what I've put forth on the record, I would certainly ask the court to consider those. Um, and I would ask the court grant the motion uh, with prejudice. Thank you. Thank you. State? Yeah, I would like an opportunity to more fully respond to this um, in, uh, with a little bit of research. Um, at first blush, though, uh, and I, I reserve the right to present case law and additional um, uh, sites to the court, but I do want to point out for the record that the defendant has presented interviews to uh, at least one media source and at least one online source uh, since his arrest. Um, and there have been questions about uh, that night. There have been questions about what he did, uh, things like that. Um, he has uh, decided, probably on, on advice of counsel in those certain circumstances, not to uh, give a statement in the media about what happened, but he is talking about his family life, he's talking about his friends, he's talking about the, the circumstances of the case, he's talking about how this has affected him and things like that. Um, so my point in asking those questions was, you have agreed to talk to the media, you've agreed to talk about yourself, you've agreed to get interviews, um, but until now, this is the first time you're explaining your actions. And so I'm not, I wasn't referring to his in custody statements, in fact, I never asked either detective about what the defendant told them. He actually starts to tell them some things, and then he says he wants a lawyer, and they stop him. They Mirandize him first, by the way. Uh, then he starts to tell them some things, and then he says, but I want to talk to my lawyer, and they're like, okay, we're done. So I'm not referring to that. I didn't ask any questions of the detectives about that. Um, but since this, the defendant has spoken to the media. He has talked about his life, about circumstances related to this case, he just hasn't given his exact version of events that night. So his voluntary discussion to speak to the media uh, has nothing to do with the Fifth Amendment. That is his own decision. And if he's going to pick and choose what he wants to talk about in those uh, voluntary interviews with the media, then I think that's fair game. It doesn't implicate his Miranda rights. It doesn't implicate the Fifth Amendment. He's making his own voluntary choice. Well, wait a minute. You don't think he could give an interview about his his uh, awards he won in high school, or his demerits that he got, or his uh, and, and 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 about his sports activities and his swimming and and that and uh, and decline to answer any questions about the incident in question, and that somehow a waiver of his right to silence? I I think he's doing more than that, Your Honor, uh, in these interviews. Um, he I don't know. I I knew nothing about them. I never. I, you know, I, I haven't seen all all of, I haven't seen probably 1% of all the evidence, which is pretty typical, as you know. So I have no way of knowing it. And you have some interview, uh, some interviews that he gave to uh, media or to whatever? Yeah, there's an interview that we're looking at on our computer right now from um, the Washington Post uh, where he talks to them. Um, I know there's one, uh, I think it's either the New Yorker or the GQ magazine, uh, where he s speaks to the reporters also. Um, and he doesn't go into specific details about what happened that night, but it's not like it's talking about school or swimming or things well, like that. Well, no, 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 no. Just don't leave it at He doesn't go into specific details. Yes. I mean, it's, uh, it's certainly there could be a waiver, but a very modest discussion about the activities of that night. And if you're suggesting that occurred, that could make a big difference. Um, but um, 
even even a small discussion on his part of the uh, night in question might be a full waiver. I don't know, but I and I won't know until I see it. But uh, why don't you uh, make copies of it and? Uh, Can we have a few minutes to? to hear well, answers? we won't do it right now. I I, I I do agree with you that this is not something that I would want to do. Um, sitting here uh, without giving you an opportunity to respond. Um, although I would be interested in your preliminary response to uh, the, the excluded evidence that you uh, touched on after having been told not to do this or having been told that I was confirming my prior rulings. I do want to just point out right now we've got it on the screen. This is a Washington Post article uh, and there's a reference to an interview that he says, the defendant says he did not regret having his gun because, quote, I would have died that night if I didn't, end quote. So that's a direct quote from the defendant to the media about that night. What about that? <laughs> All I can say about that interview is there were prior counsel representing him. Um, I don't care about that. Well, and, and I believe it was a telephone interview. I, what does I that have to do with it? I don't know anything about the circumstances of that. I'd have to read the article. Well, that might make a difference. Well, wait. If that article was going to be brought up, shouldn't this already be presented? Like, shouldn't the defense have already been familiar with this? Did he just not do his homework, or is this guy trying to bring up some new shit? Like, you can't bring up anything new in the trial that's not submitted into discovery, right? Shouldn't everybody be aware on that side of everything that everybody's got? That's I don't understand that part. I, I don't understand this at all. The whole point is that the interview happened during the trial. Oh, huh. Okay. So you're telling us that the reason that you wanted Dominic to buy you an AR-15 as opposed to a pistol is, is the only reason was because you felt you couldn't lawfully possess a pistol? Correct. You didn't pick up? Wait, did we just... Fuck. Oh, wait, this is different. Um, and what, no, what about the... Uh, Ban that guy, no it didn't. Oh. Uh, you're uh, asking questions about excluded evidence. Your Honor, the, we, went, we went over this earlier, and I'm, I don't want to repeat myself because I know you've heard me, but if I could just summarize. Uh, I did hear you talk about that evidence this morning before... Testimony. That was the COD clip, yeah, I got you. The defendant then took the stand. He admitted that he had said to the person in the yellow pants that he had pointed the gun at that person. I have seen that video. Um, it was actually introduced by the defense. I think it was even in their opening statement. And there is this person who confronts the defendant and accuses him of this. Frankly, to be honest, Your Honor, when I watched the video the first time, I didn't hear the defendant's reaction. I thought it was someone making an accusation, and then the defendant walking away as if trying to avoid a confrontation. I was surprised to hear the defendant admit in his testimony, on direct, by his attorney, that yes, I did tell that person that I had pointed the gun at them. He explained then that he was joking when he said that. The jury can evaluate that. It goes to his credibility, it goes to whether or not he's telling the truth, it goes to his decision making. That is, again, this is an incident that occurred that night, so it's not something that happened separate in time. It presumably happened a few minutes. Can we please the air install uh, the volume control thing again? Wait, can you not hear this? Is the volume too quiet for you? We, it, we're fine. We can, okay. But I, like I said, I was taken aback by the defendant admitting that he had said to this person, yes, I pointed a gun at you. Um, and I think it's fair to say that watching that video, that that person, you know, believes strongly that this happened. The defendant is telling him it happened. Now the defendant today is giving us a different version and saying, oh, I made it, I was joking, I was just kidding that guy or whatever. I'd like to probe that. I'd like to probe what he said to that person. I'd like to probe what his motivations were, etc. I'd like to probe whether, in fact, he really did do that. Um, and I think that 
that changes the equation with regard to the CDS video that was the subject of the other X motion. Because in my mind, it is very similar. And I know we've disagreed on that, and I'm not going to belabor the point, Your Honor, but that was where I was coming from, was there's been a change in the testimony of the defendant today that I think makes that evidence. It's admissible and much more relevant than it already was, and I thought it was already uh, relevant. And the court is... I, I do want to be clear so also... So I'm just here on the sidelines just to... Well... You, yeah, uh, I had made a ruling that the ev evidence wasn't coming in, and you decided that it was. I, I, if I could just respond to that briefly, Your Honor, I was about to say, I did not interpret your ruling as an absolute... We, we've had three state motions in the room. <coughs> there was one in which we asked the court to introduce evidence that the defendant was at Pudgy's Bar with Proud Boys, and you were clear, that is not coming in. There was... You know, don't get into other subjects. Get it... Get, come on, what you're telling me... You're an experienced trial attorney, and you're telling me that when the judge says, I'm excluding this, you just to take it upon yourself to put it in because you think that you've found a way around it? Come on. If I may finish, Your Honor, I was about to say, <laughs> your, your ruling on our three motions and uh, other acts motions was there were some gradations there. That you were clear that some things were absolutely out, and then you left the door open on other things. Uh, uh, you know. So I, I, I saw that distinction, and I thought to myself, Clearly, I know this is out, but you left the door open on other things. So I didn't interpret your ruling as this is absolutely never coming in. And I have practiced before you, Your Honor. I have filed other motions, motions before you. Your practice oftentimes is to reserve ruling on those until you see the evidence. And I think you even said something to that effect at our motion. I undoubtedly did. So I thought this is my good faith explanation to you. And if you want to yell at me, you can. My good faith feeling this morning after watching that testimony was you had left the door open a little bit. Now we had something new, and I was going to probe it. I don't believe you. Oh. There better not be another incident. I'll take the motion under advisement. Um, and you can respond. Um, Jeez. Be mad. When you say that, that you were acting in faith, good faith, I don't believe that, okay? Let's proceed. Everybody in good faith. All right. Um, that guy's a destiny debater for sure. Up, please, Mr. I do have. Yeah. Your Honor. Yeah. I do have another um, item. That okay. What is this? These memes. You couldn't lawfully possess a pistol. Is is the only reason was because you felt you couldn't lawfully possess a pistol? Correct. You didn't pick out the AR-15 for any other reason. I thought it looked cool, um, but no. You didn't pick it out because you wanted to go hunting with it, did you? No. You didn't pick it out because you were going to um, use it to protect your house, correct? Correct. You picked it out because it looked cool. I thought it looked cool. Guess it, that's the reason, yes. It resembled the types of weapons that are used in first-person <laughs> shooter video games, correct? <laughs> oh, no. I don't really play first-person shooter video games. I have, but I believe there's a variety of guns, including shotguns, pistols. It there's guns in video games that resemble all guns. Isn't it true when you would hang out at, with Dominic Black, you'd play Call of Duty and other first-person shooter video games? <laughs> Sometimes. And those are games in which you use weapons like AR-15s to pretty much shoot anybody who comes at you, correct? It's a video game where two players are playing together. I don't really understand the meaning of your question, to be honest. Isn't one of the things people do in these video games try and kill everyone else with your guns? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, the video game. It's just a video game. It's not real life. Now, you introduced yourself as living in Walworth County right now. Is yes. that right? Is that On it? On the date that this all happened, you were an Illinois resident? Correct. You had grown up in Illinois? Correct. That's it. You had not spent any significant time living here in Wisconsin, correct? No. You'd agree with me that's correct? No, I, I had spent time at my father's house and partially live here also, so no, that's not correct. You indicated you had attended, was it Penn Foster High School? Yes. That's an online high school? Correct. 
So you were not attending high school in person? No. Online at high the school. Time that all of the things in this case. Oh wait, happened. is this because of like From coronavirus the time shit that or? AR-15 was purchased to the night of August 25th. You were 17 years old that entire time, correct? Correct. Could we have exhibit number seven up, please? What? Is it gonna be violent shit? Fuck. No, it's PBS. Oh, okay. Um, okay, well, Call of Duty player. What more is there to say? Hold on one sec, I'll be back, and then we'll do that one sec. You indicated that you came upon that vehicle we've been calling the Duramax. You know what vehicle I'm talking about? I do. And you indicated that when you got there, you walked around that vehicle and you saw a person that you now know to be Joshua Zeminski. Is that right? I, I walked up to the Duramax, yes. You didn't know Joshua Zeminski's name at that point, correct? No. You hadn't taken any notice of him at all up until that moment, all night long. Fair? Fair. This is the first time that you see that this is a person that comes to your attention. Fair? Yes. And you said he had a gun in his hand. Yes. And you put the fire extinguisher down on the ground. I, I dropped the fire extinguisher. And then you hear or see Mr. Rosenbaum coming from behind you. I... When I get to the Duramax, I step forward, and then Mr. Zeminski turns towards me, and he steps towards me. I drop the fire extinguisher, step back, and that's when I see... I, I, I go to run back towards... 59th Street. And Mr. Rosenbaum is coming. And then I, that's when I noticed Mr. Rosenbaum running at me, leaving me with no other, right? Mr. Zeminski in front of me with the gun. Mrs. Zeminski right there, um, a couple feet away, and then some other people I, there. And then the chase happens. Is that yes. fair to say? Yes. Have you told us Everything that you did when that situation just happened at the Duramax. Yes. Can we play the iPad, please? The iPad with the drone video. There's nothing bad, right? This is exhibit number 73. I don't know if you, what are you guys going to do? No. They don't even get to play it. Oh, okay. Mr. Rittenhouse, this is a video that has been admitted into evidence as exhibit number 73. This is a video taken by a drone that was hovering south of 63rd uh, at the time that you shot Mr. Uh, Rosenbaum. We're going to play the beginning of this video on the iPad and I'm going to have Detective Howard uh, use the pinch and zoom feature on the iPad to zoom in on the area the presence of the jury. What do you think? Perfect time for a break, don't you think? Uh, let's take a break. Please don't talk about the case uh, during the break. Read. What if they did talk about the case? Of the trial.
That would be wild, bro. Brohan, Brocephalus. What's up? Your Honor. What? Excuse me, what? I think they went upstairs, though. Uh, go ahead. Your Honor, I don't know what the state's going to do next, but I suspect that it's something along the lines of they're going to use the iPad, and Mr. Binger was talking about pinching the screen. iPads, which are made by Apple, have artificial intelligence in them that allow things to be viewed through three dimensions and logarithms. A logarithms, I don't understand. It means all algorithms. Um, and it uses artificial intelligence or their logarithms to create what they believe is happening. So this isn't actually enhanced video. This is Apple's iPad programming creating what it thinks is there, not what necessarily is there. That's what all enhanced and video is. Generally. I don't know what's going to happen, but we had this video enhanced. We have testimony regarding it, and this is one of the topics that came up. I asked my expert. I said, do you know of anything that does something like that? Because that was when Detective Antaramian testified about pinching his telephone. And that's what I was told. And that's what I think this is going. And I don't think that it's appropriate. It's, it's wrong. Mr. Binger? Your Honor, I think everybody in, the in this room has a smartphone, whether it's an Apple iPhone or some other device. And I think uh, we've all taken a photograph or a video at one point or another and used this the, a shitty the argument. pinch to zoom in feature. This is a common part of everyone's everyday life. Um, in the olden days, you had a photograph and a, mic and a magnifying glass, right? That doesn't change the photograph. When you use a magnifying glass to look at words on a paper or a photograph, the magnifying glass doesn't change the image. It doesn't change the pickles, pixels on the paper. It doesn't change the words in the book. All it does is make them easier to see. The pinch and zoom feature on the iPad or the iPhone or an Android phone, whatever device everyone in this room has, does that exact same thing. That analogy was actually so incorrect and so bad, I wouldn't trust this guy in anything related to any of the technology. He might be right, but if he is, it's by chance. He has no idea what he's talking about. <clears throat> now, if counsel has an expert who will say that this is unreliable or distorting the image or something along those lines, even though this is something Everybody in this room has done with countless videos and photos throughout the last 20 years, 10 years of our lives here. Um, this is a fact, this is a feature of everyday life in America now with smartphones. If they want to have an expert come in and say it's unreliable and you can't believe what's on that screen, they can do that. We're still in their case. And then the jury can make a decision as to whether or not pinching and zooming on an iPad or an iPhone is tampering with the video or altering the image or unreliable or shouldn't be given any weight. So if they want to make a jury question out of this, they are free to do so. We're still in their case in chief. But I don't frankly understand or agree with anything counsel just said. I've used my phone, I think probably you have too, I think this is something within everyone's common knowledge, to pinch and zoom on a screen. And that's what's going on here. It does not change the image in any way. It just, well, it, you're like a saying, glass. You, well, I don't know. When I put the magnifying glass up, then it's enlarging the image. It is not altering the image. What he's saying, and I think, and I, less, I know less than anyone in the room here, I'm sure, about all this stuff, 
but uh, I'm hearing him to say that they're actually artificially inserting pixels into there, which is altering the object which is being portrayed. And so, you know what, I, I, myself, when confronted with these changes in technology, what I usually do is to have, to admit the evidence, but uh, make sure that the finder of fact is aware of the fact that it is not the original image and the method by which it's been enhanced. Uh, you're suggesting that I should make the defense bring in an expert for it. My, my thought would be that actually you're the one who's offering the exhibit, so you should be in a position to offer evidence uh, as to the fact that it is not distorting the uh, object which is depicted. I, I would submit, Your Honor, that I think it's common sense to everyone in this room that that's not what's going on here and what counsel is Oh, this is such a good argument for why. It seems really annoying, but like, depending on the court case, especially when technologies are involved, you need expert witnesses for so many different things. And this is a really good reason why. It's because you'll get people that'll say, like, this is common sense, it's common sense. What this guy is saying is common sense. He's actually just 100% completely and totally wrong. He fundamentally misunderstands the technology completely. Um, this is a really good reason why expert witnesses are so important to, to jury and judge trials, any trial at all. Saying about Apple software and logarithms and things like that is not something that people in this room are familiar with. I, I thought I heard the experts say on the stand, and believe me, again, it's, this is not something I'm familiar with, but I thought I heard the experts say that you brought down in, from the crime lab that in fact that there were alterations made by adding pixels that's an alteration of the image. So I don't have any problem with it being received, but you're going to have to have someone testify that it's a reliable, I don't want to say mirror image, but uh, uh, because obviously if you insert more items into a, an area of space, it's going to distort what's depicted. Your Honor, when the pinch and zoom maneuver is used on the screen, it, it, it actually, um, it, it almost, it, it, it takes the high resolution that we see here and it brings it into the point where the pixels are actually spread out more. I don't, you know what, I'm not, gonna ex I'm not gonna accept as accurate what Richards is saying and I'm not gonna accept what you're telling me. I said if you can offer somebody who's knowledgeable in these areas the document, or the, uh, the, I think you should be allowed to use the image, but I, this is high risk it, it, to me. If, uh, it, to me, if, if, if you insert more data into a, a, an area of space, well, you're what, nagging, wagging your head no. no Tell me where that. I'm wrong. There's no proof in this record that we're doing that, Your Honor. I didn't say there was proof of it. I said you have the burden of proof. You're the proponent of the exhibit, and you need to tell me that it's reliable. The, the exhibit's already in evidence, Your Honor. That I know. The exhibit is, but not the pinch and zoom, it's right? It's not in evidence. You could it's argue it's a different thing, which is what the defense is doing. Well, if, <laughs> then why show it? I, I, I mean, the reason you want to show it is so because it enhances the image, right? No, one, no, 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 one at a time. I'll, I'll say what Mr. Krause is just saying. The, the defense has taken videos and photos and cropped them, zoomed in on them, uh, on many exhibits in this trial. And this is, again, like I said, uh, the magnifying glass is not changing the image. What the expert testified to about his software program was that he uses, I think he called it AMFAR. Did they, when the defense did it earlier, did they call an objection? Are you allowed to object to something that's been done prior to that? Or? <sighs> okay, hold on, also, the judge brings this up, okay, this is a key distinction, okay? This is a fucking key distinction. I think this motherfucker should be thrown the fuck out if he's lying about this. If they already cropped and zoomed the images and that was already there as part of the discovery process, because when you do the discovery process, my understanding is both sides can see everything on the table, okay? It's not Yu-Gi-Oh, it's not Pokemon. You don't have a deck of hidden cards, it's dominoes. All the shit is out for everybody to fucking see, okay? Well, I think in dominoes, you keep your dominoes in. Find some analogy that works out, right? Now, if the defense submitted the cropped and zoomed images, 
in discovery that is way different than them trying to do this on the fly during trial. Because you could argue, sounds like the defense arguing this, this should be a different piece of evidence that should have been submitted, right? But we'll, but we'll see. Or something like that. It was, a, it was a software program he was using to create the additional images or the exhibits that were introduced with regard to this drone video. And he talked about what that software program does. He was not talking about the, the common, ordinary, everyday pinch and zoom feature on the Apple. They're two different things, Your Honor, and I want to be precise about this because I don't think it's fair to equate the technical video editing software used by the crime lab with pinching and zooming on an iPhone. They're, they're different software programs, different procedures, and I don't think it's fair to extrapolate this. The, every one of those jurors is familiar with this process. This is a, a, a fundamental part of our lives nowadays. It's much like 100 years ago, people used magnifying glasses. This is no different than that. And if it's, uh... I think this is common knowledge, and I don't think I need any sort of expertise on this issue. If the defense wants to quibble with it, they have an expert who can offer testimony. But the exhibit's already in evidence. It would be well, no first different off, than me for first off, off a, the exhibit. a photograph of it and then, and then holding up an, uh, an enlargement. I mean, we had a guy come in yesterday with Walgreens prints. I mean, this is, this is what is done with photographs all the time. There's enlargements done in the lab. It doesn't change the pixels. Don't, no, 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 you, you know. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't want to hear about what happened earlier in the trial that came in without objection. If you didn't object, then I didn't address it. Now, I'm not going to police this case, so everybody, any time somebody wants to put some evidence in, I'm going to say, well, wait a minute, what about that, what about that? I have to have an objection. I get an objection, and then I rule on it. There has been no objection during this trial when either side has exploded an image or, or anything like that. Here's a question for um, Apples or Esports Batman or Pisco, if either of you are in chat. Oh, Apple is our only lawyer here. If you, let's say that in the middle of a trial, you like brought up some piece of evidence that's totally not related. It wasn't submitted. Like no one's heard about it before. Let's say that you bring it in and you submit it to the jury basically as part of your um, questioning and you do all of that. But let's say the other side doesn't object. Is it allowed to stay? Or would the judge like interject and say, you're not allowed to do that? Like is the judge here to ever say this is right or wrong on his own? Or does he only speak um, when some sort of interjection is made, like an objection is made by some side. That happened already before the jury got there when the prosecutor broke Rosenbaum leaving a mental hospital. Depends how obvious it is. He could, but he could miss it. Okay. Maybe it just depends on the thing. All right. Like that. If you'd have brought it in an objection, if he'd have brought in an objection, I would have ruled on it. But to, to say now, well, this has already been done during the trial. I've got an objection in front of me now. He's suggesting that the uh, amplifying the image uh, is, uh, is altering what is portrayed, the image which is portrayed. And you're giving me as a defense, it's no different from using a magnifying glass I don't believe that because if I take, you know, the image is the same and all it is doing is improving my poor old vision. Uh, here you've got someone, to correct me if I'm wrong, I do believe the expert that, uh, testified that he had inserted, or the, either the, him or the device, inserted additional pix pixels into the image. That... Different program, yeah. Well, I don't know what kind of a program. I don't care what kind of a program it is. The question is, is the is the is the image in it? I'm shocked that this guy would 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 have any wherewithal to be able to extrapolate from the first thing to the second thing. I would just assume that a guy that sold like, oh yeah, zoom on a phone is just like a magnifying glass. I'm, the the judge is pretty sharp to even make these connections. Like, congrats on him. Virginal state. I, I care about what program it is, Your Honor, because these are these are technical issues. Mr. Richards has just made representations with no basis whatsoever. Can you slow down? Absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Richards has just made technical representations with no basis in this record whatsoever. He is questioning a common part of life 
that we use, everyone uses, every single day. The expert who testified was talking about a different software program, and it does make a difference. I it might, know. but you need the expert to well, testify then that. Then if there's going to be an issue, let's, well, let's you're make the an proponent. Issue. I said before. Why can't, why can't he just bring in an expert witness tomorrow? or something? Does it take a long time to prep them, or...? Why, or why could they it sounded like the defense already had an expert witness here for it. Why can't they just bring him and ask him or whatever? Prosecution already rested. Oh, so you're not allowed to summon or wait what? You want to join the court to allow it. Yeah, but can't you just do this on another day or? The judge said he can do it later. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to talk about it further. You're the proponent, and you need to uh, assure me before I let the jury um, uh, uh, speculate on it that it is a reliable method that does, that does not distort what is depicted. So Okay, I, so we're going to take a break. I understood you correctly. We can play it now, and then we'll tie it up later. I don't think that's what I said. <laughs> that's, what I said that's why I'm asking. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I don't. <laughs> what? That was a that was a good nice try, dude. Holy shit! <clears throat> do you want to do anal tonight? I don't know. I just I don't feel like I'm prepared for it. I don't know if I'm ready for it mentally. Like I don't know. Okay. Wait, what are you doing? Oh well, I thought like we could like I could fuck you down. Maybe you could prepare later. <laughs> like, what? What a what a weird How weird. Is there like killings in this video? Do I try Oh, you guys can't even see it. Oh god, this is the prosecution's secret weapon. <laughs> Holy shit, we're in some fucking where's Waldo territory. All right, where is the gun raised? We're going to find it, boys. Don't you? I I I can't see it. <laughs> This is a nice uh, 4K uh, TV. I'm going to turn it a little bit towards you. <laughs> a little bit back so you can see. Are you able to see that, that screen okay? Oh, man. All right. Hold on one second. Quick save. Exit game. The TV being 4K actually makes it work. Now, if the, process, if the defense was super tech savvy <laughs> and wanted to get really anal, what the defense could say is... 4K televisions actually do a lot of wonky shit interpolating footage. One of the worst things, I've spoken about this a few times, one of the worst things is every single fucking 4K TV has this new dumbass um, frame interpolation technology where they fucking make, they, I don't know, you wouldn't call it upscaling. I've only heard it called, referred it to, to 60. Yeah, they make everything 60 yeah. FPS. <laughs> that sucks. And it's so irritating. Um, cause it, it looks like shit. You can see the video is like jumpy. It's not native FPS, 60 FPS. It's, yeah, uh, frame smoothing, frame insertion, whatever you call it. Oh God, it's so horrible. I, I don't think all the jurors can see it now. I want to be able to play it for the defendant to be able to see it. Up I understand. Time. I'm just thinking if, if perhaps he could, uh, take the chair that the officer is in right now. And do you want to go over there as well? Would you, uh, would it be easier, Mr. Rittenhouse, if you came and stood a little closer to that screen? Is that the same definition? Well, you know, and you're using the pointer, uh, <laughs> so we want to all be looking at the same TV. Okay. Okay. Um, would, would it be appropriate for Mr. Rittenhouse to come sure. stand closer to the TV? As long, okay? as, he doesn't, as long as he doesn't block the jurors, he and Mr. Richards can go over here. This trial has been Let's, 10 out of 10 uh, memes. Yeah, Jesus. It's been good. Stand right down, down there if you want, please. Let's go back to the beginning of the video, please. I'm going to tell you when to pause. Don't want to tell him. Wait, was that the fucking TV? I don't know. Okay. I'm looking now. Where is Kyle at? Oh, no. Is Kyle right. this guy here? Pause. <laughs> Which one is... Okay, pause. Hold on. We're going to find him. Mr. Rittenhouse. How are you even supposed to know? <laughs> you just came into the screen, put the fire extinguisher down, and now you've got your weapon raised, don't you? 
<laughs> where is he? Weapon raised where? Let's play one more time. <laughs> what are they thinking? <laughs> one more time. <laughs> this is some fucking Bigfoot found footage shit. He says he can't see, so I'm trying to help him see. Go ahead. Is this Did him? Did they ever point him out? Near the street light? There, he's using Pause. like a pointer on the screen. Pause the video. He's dead center of the screen. Near the sign? It doesn't look like I raised my rifle. Is he near like the... Like my shoulder's up, but my rifle's pointed downward. Oh. Is it one of these people? Thank you. Oh. All right. <laughs> this is like impossible to like tell. The guy in the middle of the street. Oh, wait, is he this one here? Is it this guy? I think I recognize him now from the 15 pixel image from before. Oh no, people are saying no, people are saying yes. Hold on. Let's see where they play it one more time. Oh, it, I think it's this guy. Okay, here we go, hold on. Pause. Oh, no way! Video. It can't be. The, the, no way. It just looks like someone walking. No, that's not him. It's not that guy. Wait, people are saying yes and no simultaneously. He does look like an Amogus. Is it this guy? That's 100% him. That is him. Pause. Go ahead. Wait, is it not the guy? I don't know how to show it to you. Pause. <laughs> Bro, it's fucking Slender Man. Okay, Mooten, find the person in this screen with their gun raised. Go. Uh, I think it's like one, two, three, four, like four people over from the guy that you're pointing at, from the Amogus guy. In the red shirt? I'm fucking colorblind. I don't even know how you can tell color. No, no, no. Uh, sorry, to the left. You want to know the real damning thing is that at this resolution, you know what? You know what I'm gonna actually guess here? I'm gonna I'm gonna completely and totally pull this out of my ass. I'm gonna completely and totally pull this out of my ass and guess. Um. Pause the video. Hold on. We on the on the internet, we're not seeing this in the original resolution because the camera, this video has already been processed or something because there's no way that the FBI is running around with drones filming at fucking 480p. There's just no way. Drone cameras have to have way more resolution than this. Our yeah. Drone cameras like sick as fuck. Yeah, I'm looking at the um I'm looking at the, uh, like even a GoPro has got to look better than this. I'm looking at the taskbar and I'm seeing that it's all kind of fuzzy, but it could just be set to a low resolution. This wasn't an FBI drone, this was civilian. Okay, if it was civilian. It should be even better. Then it should be even better, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it's civilian, then it absolutely should have higher image resolution. What kind of a stupid fucking kid would be flying a drone around trying to record footage and not even put a decent camera in their fucking drone? The drone from the fucking family okay. dollar. Now I will say this is true. It was at night, so if it is at night, then your image quality is going to be be uh, severely hampered. That's true as well. Um, yeah. The interesting thing that the prosecution could, or I'm sorry, that the defense could argue though is that. Arguably, the video footage itself is already tainted like by the time it hits the drive of the drone. Because, oof, okay, we're testing the limits of my knowledge of video. If I had to guess out of thin air, my guess is going to be that drones themselves, cameras that you would put on them, probably aren't recording like raw dumps of footage because that shit is really data expensive. 
the the um the footage itself on the drone is probably already running through would it be an h264 or h265 algorithm i don't know what they would use for recording but it's probably or vp9 or uh, i don't i don't know what algorithm it would use but my guess is going to be that footage on a drone is already going to be compressed by the time it hits that drone's drive because raw footage is going to be pretty data heavy although we do also have a lot of data today um uh, or a lot of storage. So people saying, aren't micro SD cards pretty good? So the issue, now, this my, my knowledge might be dated, okay? So maybe it'll be different here, right? The issue isn't storage. The issue is gonna be your write speed. Because on a um, on a really high quality data drum, dump, you're, you're talking about like, I think gigabytes of footage for just a few minutes, I believe. Like a few minutes will get you into the, the gigabytes worth of footage. And the problem there isn't do you have enough storage for it? It's can you write that quickly on the same thing that's like recording? Um, these are like guesses. I don't know 100%, but yeah. Who are you talking to? Also, sensors usually have low pass optical filters over them that is physical anti aliasing. Uh, or maybe, I don't know. <clears throat> okay. Um, I can't believe I'm about to lose 6,000 viewers playing two games of League with you. <sighs> what? Don't then. I don't give a fuck. I'll just hang out. Oh, so you don't care about League. You don't care about no, us getting I, I You don't give a fuck wanna, about us. I don't want to ruin your life, okay? At that point, you're kind of saying any video should be inadmissible. There's no video capture device that captures 100% accurate picture, and they, uh, yes. <laughs> what I would argue is that any video footage that's captured on a digital device where one or two pixels is gonna be the difference between me being exonerated versus me getting charged with fucking manslaughter or murder should be inadmissible. Absolutely, of course. I, don't, I can't believe you would try to make that sound crazy. Yeah, I would say you either need better, you need better evidence or you need higher resolution video. I, will, I, I don't think you should ever have, especially if the state is prosecuting a case, right? The defendant's life should never be up to whether or not the, there was a digital guess on if a pixel was like one up or one down. I think that's totally. F I think that's totally fair. Okay, quick question. Reverse the roles. You know Kyle cried earlier in quarter whatever, right? Okay. Reverse the roles. If it was a woman crying, do you think people on Twitter would be making fun of them? No, absolute, or absolutely. Or a black person crying. Not. It, if, if a black not. person was crying on stage, they would be like, "These are the tears of MLK and Malcolm X flowing through this person as they see the historic injustices no play out in real time." Over. Or if it was a woman, it's like the weight of the whole patriarch has come down upon her right now, and of course, like anybody would break at this moment. But of course, but like seventeen-year-old kid that shot three I people did, and killed yep. two <laughs> must See be ya. faking obviously faking how could anybody be traumatized by this like yeah people saying yeah that one woman saying she wants him raped in prison and stuff that's insane i don't know lebron james fucking tweeted about it so yeah i saw him it. but nba players then was They're lebron also, also the dipshit or was it it wasn't kobe LeBron i think it was dead chinese shit no 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 was LeBron the dipshit that tweeted oh, out? Yes. Yeah, about Michaela or With whatever. Michaela. Yeah, in like, mm -hmm. And in he like tweeted out the like whatever. the yeah. picture of the cop or whatever. Yeah. Le cop, yeah. 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 LeBron yeah. has dog shit takes on. You know what? Most athletes, I'm sorry. Most athletes have dog shit takes on politics. 